we are taking a look at Assassin's Creed Shadows, the next upcoming Assassin's Creed game by Ubisoft. This one is already off to a bad start and we haven't even seen gameplay yet. The reason why people are so upset and angry at Assassin's Creed Shadows is because there are two protagonists and one is a black man and the other one is a female Japanese assassin. Yasuki, one of the characters in Assassin's Creed, shadows the mark of this character as a first black japanese samurai which he wasn't he was a retainer yuzaki was a man likely of african origin who served as a servant and a retainer people say that they picked yasuki because he's black in assassin's creed 3 the main protagonist of the game was Noah watch also known as connor a half english half mohawk assassin born in the 18th century colonial america assassin's creed odyssey cassandra is the main character in assassin's creed odyssey she is a former Spartan mercenary who fought during the Peloponnesian War. Cassandra is a described as a ruggedly strong, enchanting, and dangerous. And generous. She has a high percentage of ICU DNA, which gives her superhuman strength, precognition, and other magical abilities. I'm going to let this next clip play out because this guy explains what kind of controversy is going on around Assassin's Creed Shadows. And I'll link this guy's Twitter in the description of this video. So we got our first look at the new Assassin's Creed game and i gotta say man i i'm not impressed i'm actually just really annoyed right now we have two main protagonists one female one male just like odyssey i'm gonna be using nao i hope i said that right a female japanese character and for the male character they're gonna be using yasuke now i'm annoyed because they're using yasuke and i'm gonna tell you why yasuke is what they want to say is the first black japanese samurai when in all actuality he was not even a samurai he was a retainer so he wasn't even a full-blown samurai. And for all of the characters they could have used for Japan, all these kind of different people they could have picked from, they picked Yasuke. Why do they pick Yasuke? Because he's black. So in context, that doesn't matter to me. Because in all the Assassin's Creed games, every single character has been of some kind of different race and nationality. So that doesn't matter to me. That's fine. But you have to understand what day and age we're in. You have to understand the kind of social shit that they want to try to get across in these video games now. So instead of using a Japanese man in a game based in Japan, like they did with the other Assassin's Creed games, Altair, he was an Arab, obviously. One of my favorites, Connor, in Assassin's Creed 3, he was Native American, that was fine. And the most famous of them all, Ezio Auditore, who was Italian. So why in all those games would you have a character representative of the region they're from? But in this game, you want to demote a Japanese man and then use Yasuke. I understand why, we know why, but they're not gonna tell you why because if you call it out, you're some kind of ist or phobe or whatever. And since I'm black and I'm calling it out, that means that I must hate my skin or something. You know how they do. I just see this and my immediate thought is they did this for brownie points. I can't think of any other reason why you would have a Assassin's Creed game based in Japan, which we've been clamoring for since the beginning of Assassin's Creed, and then have the main protagonist that is a male be black. I see that and I'm like, that's that. Uh, there's no other reason than I want claps for it. There's no other reason. And I'm an Assassin's Creed fan. I've played every game. I love every game. And one of my favorite characters is actually Cassandra from Odyssey. So nobody can sit here and say, I don't like women or I don't like diverse people or whatever. When one of my favorite characters is diverse. Hell, Connor, Kenway, and hate them Kenway. Those are some of my favorite characters from Assassin's Creed. So before the idiots want to start, that's not the reason. The reason is I see straight through this bullshit and I know exactly why they picked this character. It's annoying. That's like if Ghost of Tsushima, instead of using Jin, they used a white dude. People would be like, that doesn't make any sense. This doesn't make any sense to me. It's stupid. I know exactly why you're doing it. I see straight through it. It's annoying. It's pandering. It doesn't do anything for me, but piss me off. Knowing the history and for it to be changed, it's kind of disrespecting the history behind it. We already know that Ubisoft won't talk about this situation and people are going to spread review bombs of this game when it actually releases or before release. And it's it's probably going to be very frustrating. It's probably not a big deal to other people, but when you know the history behind it, these specific characters and their origin, it just it really disrespects the character and how they represent the game. And it just once you play the game, it's just not going to make sense. Assassin's Creed Shadows is an upcoming action 
action role-playing video game developed by Ubisoft Cubic and published by Ubisoft. Set to release in November of 2024, the game is the 14th major installment in the Assassin's Creed series and the successor to 2003 Assassin's Creed Mirage, as well as the first title to be included in the Assassin's Creed Infinity platform set in the 16th century Japan towards the end of Sengoku period. The game will focus on the millennia-old struggle of the Assassin's Creed Brotherhood who fought for peace and liberty and the Templar Order who desired peace through control from the perspective of two protagonists, Noi and a female Shinobi and Yazuki, and African samurai inspired by the historical figure of the same name. The two characters controlled differently and provided a unique gameplay style, allowing quests to be approached in multiple ways. A new creed rises. Lib the interwined stories of Noi and adapt Shinobi assassin from LGA Province and Yuzaki, the powerful African samurai of historical legend against the backdrop of the turbulent late Sengaku period. This remarkable duo with will discover their common destiny as their usher in a new era for Japan. Explore feudal Japan. Discover the captivating open world of feudal Japan from its spectacular castle towns and bustling ports to peaceful shrines and pastoral landscapes. Adventures through unpredictable weather changes, seasons, and reactive environments. Become a shinobi assassin. As the quick-witted and agile Noe use noise, light, and shadows to evade detection as enemies respond to their changing surroundings. Distract guards using kunai shraken and smoke bombs. Infiltrate enemy bases with your grappling hook and parkour skills and assassinate your targets with a hidden blade. Become a legendary samurai. As the charismatic samurai Yuzaki strikes your foes with brutal precision and power, use his combat oriented skills, attack, block parry, and defeat your enemies. Master the vast arsenal of weapons at your disposal. Featuring katana, kanobo bows, naginata, and more to free Japan from its oppressors. Information is your weapon. Travel the world, explore, and scout your surroundings to gather vital intel. Build your network of spies to be your eyes and ears across locations to unveil new areas and hunt down your next target. Along the way, recruit several allies with highly specialized skills and abilities to help accomplish your missions. Play it your way. You decide whether to play as a shinobi or a samurai. Master complementary play styles of two fully realized protagonists approaches quests with whichever character you prefer, as each possesses their own respective progression stats, skills, and gear. Noe, trained as a shinobi assassin for LGA preference, Noe sets out to travel through Japan as a quest for revenge to fulfill an impossible promise. Yuzaki, after completing his training to become a skilled samurai, Yuzaki finds a new purpose confronting the demons of his past. Right, this is absolutely crazy. So the pricing of Assassin's Creed Shadows is kind of ridiculous. So the standard edition, it comes with a base game and the pre-order bonus, which is $70. The gold edition comes with a base game, pre-order bonus, season pass, and three days early access. The gold and the ultimate edition is basically the same thing. But with the ultimate edition, you get the ultimate pack, but it costs $20 more than the gold edition. That is actually crazy. So you have a $70 version, $110 version, $130 version. Then you can go through a subscription to get this game. And it says here at the bottom, it says you get an extra mission available at launch, which is actually crazy. I'm going to try to zoom it in here. So it looks like here at the bottom, it says play three days early, Ultimate Edition, Assassin's Creed Shadow. Season Pass includes two upcoming expansions, plus an extra mission available at launch. Then the Ultimate Pack is... The, we have the character pack, which is like the, the skin bundle here. And we have the hideout pack, which looks pretty cool. And we have skill points, which is five and red dragon photo filter. This looks like this is all going to be um, part of cosmetics, which if you actually go through the bundles, it pretty much same. This is displayed as a, like a $20 bonus here. So that is pretty insane for a bundle like that. So if you want to get the base game and all DLCs, you have to pay around $110. That's not even with tax. If you want to get everything, including these, the season pack, and three days early access and you want to get the ultimate pack you have to pay 130 dollars so you're literally paying for two triple a titles worth combined this price which is absolutely insane to me that is crazy and what i also forgot to mention in the video is there's actually uh if you go on gamestop right now there is actually like a collector's edition here so it looks 
pretty cool. You can like zoom in on the picture here. So this is what you get. Um, very expensive, two hundred seventy nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Um, this is the the PS five edition, I think. Yeah, it says right there. So it looks pretty dope. So as you see here, this is what you get inside of the whole collection. So if you guys want to check this out, I'll link it down in the description of this video so you guys can check it out. So so this is going to be all the information is going to be under IGN article on Assassin's Creed um, Shadows. So it says the setting Assassin's Creed Shadows takes place in the in the Azuki Maoi Mama period of Japanese history. The story begins in 1579 and will continue into the early 1580s. The time period means that this is the first game in this series to feature the Assassins and Templars and their classic form since 2015's Assassin's Creed Syndicate. A number of historical figures play prominent roles in the campaign. These include Oda Nobunaga, the great unifier of Japan, and Fujibayashi, a master ninja of the LDA clan. Much like Assassin's Creed Syndicate, Shadows feature two protagonists, and you can switch between them as you play through the campaign. The first of these duel leads as Noe, the fictional daughter of Nagato Fujibayashi. She is trained by her father father to be skilled shinobi the second protagonist is yasuki a real historical figure originally from africa yasuki came to japan with a portuguese in 1579 and soon become a samurai in the employ of lord oda nabunaga shadows and the first assassin's creed game to ever let you play as a real person from the past stealth and parkour as the title suggests light and dark is a major part of the assassin's creed a shadows stealth system a new global a Illumination system creates dynamic light and shadows that affect enemy vision. You can now hide in shadows and even create darkness by destroying lanterns or killing torch carriers. A light meter on the UI shows how well concealed you are from fully visible to completely hidden. Servants are a new type of NPCs raking between civilians and enemies while they cannot fight. They are able to call in reinforcements and raise alarms. They have their own patrol route and carry lanterns at night. There is now the option to knock out foes when performing a stealth takedown, allowing for a more pacifist playthrough. You can now crawl along the ground in a prone position, allowing you to maintain a lower profile as well as a get through small openings. Nobi has a grappling hook that can be attached to every roof edge, as well as a number of other anchor points. Unlike the zip line like grappling hook from Assassin's Creed Syndicate, this rope uses physics simulation to allow dynamic swinging. The grappling hook can be used to quickly climb into the ceiling space above corridors allowing you to lay and wait for enemies patrolling beneath you. Eagle vision returns, allowing you to spot silhouettes of NPCs through walls. Enemies are marked in red, while the new servants are colored orange. The drone-like bird used in Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla to scout out areas and mark targets is not available in Shadows. You need to do your own reconnaissance work. As a shinobi, Noe, and the most skilled at stealth, Yasuki can use stealth, but his size and armor plating means he's better at using those skills to get the top on targets rather than perform a fully silent infiltration. So on screen here, I'm going to show you guys a couple screenshots and these screenshots show in-game actual gameplay and cutscenes of what the game is actually going to look like. And these pictures look pretty badass and it gives us an idea of what the game is actually going to look like. So the combat and RPG system, this area of Japanese warfare did not make use of shields. So your gear does not include any defensive options aside from your armor. Dodges and positioning is paramount. As a samurai, Yuzaki is able to use his weapon, a block, incoming attacks and perform parries. Noe is able to engage in combat, but she is unable to block or parry. Instead, she can deflect enemies' bows. Ubisoft didn't clarify the difference between parries and deflects, but it may be that the parries enable counterattacks, while deflects are a more evasive tactic. Enemy armor has a durability system, can be broken during combat. Pretty much every prop in the game is able to dynamic dynamically damaged by your weapons katanas will slice through bushes and baskets and fruits and ninja style leaving accurate blade marks arrows will leave precise puncture marks while blunt weapons will smash pots into tiny pieces many period accurate weapons are available to use including katanas the kanabu or war club yori spears jerkin kunai and the kirishiagama and a sickle on a chain yasuki is able to use archivist rifles providing him with a powerful long range option. Each weapon has its own skill tree. Messing time into using a particular weapon will improve your proficiency with it. You can craft your own katana from gathered components and personalize it and transmog system
system will also allow you to tailor your gear to look exactly how you want it. Active combat skills return and you are unlocked by finding ninja scrolls in the world. Yuzaki and Noe have individual skill trees and gear but share XP collected weapons and resources. Yazuki and Noe have individual skill trees and gear but shares XP collected weapons and resources. Assassin's Creed Shadows exclusive concept art. Uh, here are more pictures on screen here of what these concepts art look like. These concept art looks pretty cool. Looks very good and uh, whoever made these props to them because it looks absolutely crazy. So the dynamic world and seasons. Assassin's Creed Shadows is built upon a newly updated version of the Invil game engine. The new tech allows for better lightning through global elimination. The new breakable props, more detailed assets, meshes, and much less pop in. The new Envil upgrade has allowed for a season system that seems the world progress through spring, summer, autumn, and winter. The season is dictated by your progress through the campaign in order to maintain historical accuracy, but there are steps that each period goes through to create a sense of authenticity. Authenticity. Each season comes with unique features that, that link to gameplay. For example, in the spring and summer, when plants bloom and flower, there will be bushes along grass to hide in. Later in autumn and winter, those plants will die and thus remove the hiding spots. Water also freezes in winter, which prevents you from entering pools and ponds. Icicles will form onto rooftops, edges, and can fall into disturbed, potentially giving away your position. Seasons also affect NPCs' behaviors. In the summer, enemy samurai cut through bushes and search for you. In the winter, foes stay close to fires and warm places, potentially opening up a new colder pass for you to take. A fully dynamic weather system provides appropriate climate conditions based on both the region and season. Silver weather like deep fog, howling winds, and snow impacts enemy sight and sound. A storm is an opportunity to mask your footsteps. The world features a surprisingly detailed ecology system. In spring, for an instance, wind will blow guests of pollen that have been spawned by trees, replicating a real ecosystem. The map is similar in size to the featured in Assassin's Creed Origins and replicates the central region of Japan. The map is divided into regions based on Japan's real historical provinces, including IGA, the home of the Shinobis, Rima, the location of major battle, Edomi in agriculture, breadbasket region, the iconic synchronization points return, but is reimagined away. Climbing at the top is no longer plots of a multitude of icons on your map, nor does it trigger the spinning drone shots of the area. Instead, from this vantage point, you will be able to sever the area for highlighted points of interest, which you can seek out then back on the ground. I wish for there to be less icons this time around. And so this appears to be only way of fulfilling that. Thankfully, despite this slight change, the synchronization points still act as a fast travel locations. Shadows is set during a time of flourishing urbanization, trade, and warfare. This, this allows for a wide range of locations, including towns, trading posts, farmland, and colossal castles that have been rendered at near one-to-one -one scale beyond these settled areas are mountains and forests. Assassinations and Quests. Shadows features a non-linear campaign largely focused on targets Ubisoft says that you will be able to free to track these targets in any order. Some targets simply exist in the world and you may stumble upon them organically without having researched and hunted them first. Others have more structured infiltration style gameplay attached to them. Ubisoft aims to create a more rewarding journey by being a little more hands off while the campaign is still objectively focused. The city hopes to enable more player autonomy by using hints to push players in the right direction rather than outright telling them where to go next. Most main quests can be completed as either Yazuki or Noe, allowing for freedom of approach however both characters also have their own specific missions playable only by them as well as bespoke introduction quests side quests and world activities are available beyond the main campaign notable things to find in the world includes castles temples shrines and art you can build up a spy network with agents who can be sent on missions to gather intelligence on your targets there is a hideout where you can and your allies can gather my final thoughts are i'm really excited to jump into another assassin's creed game i am a huge fan of the Assassin's Creed series and the gameplay overall being sneaky or take out enemies aggressively. Whether changing seasons in reactive environments sounds really cool as more refreshing gameplay and breathtaking. Hopefully it's good as I say in these articles and trailers which is CGI and not actual in-game footage. I'm not a fan of the prices being $70 but it's kind of expected. But $130 for other editions is kind of outrageous. You can also get three days early access if you purchase the gold and ultimate editions. 
or through Ubisoft Plus monthly subscription or creator bonuses, season pass, and a bonus request for recruiting as Sense Creed Shadows. But as of right now, I can't really throw my full opinions on it because we have not seen an official gameplay yet. So even if you're a Assassin's Creed fan, I would hold off on the pre-order because I want to see actual gameplay footage or trailers to see if the game is actually going to be good or it's going to meet your expectations to play the game yourself. So I will wait on the pre-orders. So yeah, that's been the video. So that's been a little sneak peek of Assassin's Creed Shadows, a deep dive into the gameplay and how they explained it through IGN articles. So if you guys really enjoyed this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification to never miss a video and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.